Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start. Base. There it is. We are back here again with another episode, a rather a very extensive episode. We actually have a lot to talk about. Uh, but yes, before, we do. But before we get into that, Dan, how we doing? All right, all right. It's a little warm. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really, really is. Um... Well, uh, I think that 2K has done something that we've actually been asking them to do. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, 2K a few days ago put out a post on their Twitter page, I believe, or it might have just been all over social media, um, where they basically said that they're opening up their forums and they are giving uh, their audience the microphone to step up and say whatever they would like to see on the next rendition, which I believe they basically confirmed is going to be 2K22. Um, but uh, we are here and we're actually going to break down, because I, at first I thought that it was only just one forum where they, were, they would ask you, hey, what do you want to see? But it turns out it's actually a whole bunch of forums that has subcategories. Um, so we're going to go which, through... Which is, which is why I haven't logged on to actually do it, is because I, I thought... It like you said, that it was going to be like a, a single survey thing or it was going to prompt you. It was going to be like a thing you log on, you click a link, it takes you through like eight questions and then there's a box to just type your thoughts. But the fact that I would have had to navigate 28 different forum pages just to say all of my comments is obnoxious. But that's the point of what this video is for. <laughs> yeah, um, in all fairness, I actually responded to one which I thought kind of stood above the rest, which is going to be the first one that I'm going to ask you here in just a second. But then I discovered, oh, there's actually like 10 other sub forums that I can respond to. Um, I can appreciate the gesture by 2K, but I think that's kind of going into overload because you have so many people just writing and writing. I want this. I want that. What about this? What about that? So I don't know how many people they got to go through this whole thing. I don't know who their social media manager is, but they're going to have a lot on their hands, let me tell you. Um, I mean, if it's just through the forum, I would assume that they probably have, like, a team, and they probably got, like, one or one, – I'd say probably one to three people per topic, and they're just having them filter through and essentially, like – do a tally on okay so we have 28 people who said this we got 130 who said this so these are the things we should focus on and that sort of stuff but i mean i don't know i don't know what they're doing <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's uh, i i actually like breezed through some of the the stuff that people wrote some people you know it's short and sweet but some people, man, I had to like scroll three or four times on my mouse just to get through that one uh, post. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I, I can I can appreciate the fact that you want to be long and thorough and you want to express what's on your mind. But something tells me they're not gonna read that, you know. If it yeah, pro probably not, because if the thing you sent me to just sort of break this down is like from the forum. And it says we, we've created this thread so that you can provide us with your wish list of the top three requests of things you'd like to see added. They're probably looking for like a checklist of one, two, <laughs> number one, this, number two, that, number three, this. And then they want you to move on to the next category. Yeah. And if you're going off on a, on a 40 minute tirade about something, they're going to go, all right, we're going to the next one. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I don't know. Some people want to be expressive and bless them, but there is a time and a place for that, and this certainly isn't that. But anyway, uh, with all the chit chat, let's actually get straight into it. So, I'm well, gonna, real I'm, quick, real quick. I know this isn't anything wrestling. I know this is base, but since we're talking about wrestling, yes, let's just throw throw in a, a congratulations to Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins on the pregnancy that was announced on the most recent episode of WWE Raw. Yes, a big congr congratulations to Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins. Uh, fun fact, I was actually just checking out that video. It is the number one trending video on YouTube right now. So uh, I think that says a lot. Big congratulations to the both of them. Um, I don't know if this is going to impact Seth's uh, schedule. Is he going to take some time off? Is he going to stay with Becky and try to, you know, bring the baby into the world? We'll just have to see, but I wish them both the best, bless them, um, 
and uh, hope we see uh, Becky back in that ring, safe and sound, as a mother, sometime very, very soon. I mean, I'm inclined to think that she may still linger around backstage for a minute, because she's still pretty early. I think I read that she's due sometime in December, so... She may still travel for a little while before actually stopping entirely. She just can't wrestle anymore. Um, Good luck, guys. Yes. With let's that, get into it. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask. Uh, I'm gonna read the post down. I'll throw it over to you first. You tell me whatever is on your mind, and then I'll give my sentiment. So. Uh, all right. I tried to keep each one a little short, so I'll I'll be pretty brief. Okay, but I mean, if you gotta get something out there, feel free to do so. Um, so it says, we want to hear from you. We've created this, uh, thread so that you can provide us with your, uh, wish list of the top three requests of things you'd like to see added, uh, in a, um, what is this? Added or changed in the game. Please post feedback and wish list items that you would like to see future iterations of in the WWE 2K franchise. So Dan, uh, top three requests. What are they? Um, I mean, some of these things, I didn't even go all the way to three, I just because some of them are a little more generic. With this one, it was uh, for gameplay. Is that the one we're starting with? Um, it just says top three requests. It doesn't even give a subcategory, so I'm guessing this could be whatever you want it to be. Whatever a requ- three requests you got, go ahead and shoot them out. Oh, I didn't do that. I just went through and did wish list of all, all of the individual categories. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, I mean, I guess top three requests is... Uh, I'll, I'll break it down out of my stuff. Um, I, I'd like to see the return to GM mode, which I've talked about 48 times on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, a wider wider array of... Uh, uh, let's say... wider array of creation items, like clothing. Yes. And uh, the third one that I would limit it to, and I'll go into some of this stuff more as we go, uh, probably the, uh, I'd probably go with the more, more, more extensive story mode. So like okay. more of the like branching story or just having multiple stories integrated into the game in various ways, which I'll elaborate more on once we get there. Okay, that's fair. Um, I'm going to keep mine short and sweet too. Uh, So like I said, this is the one that I actually responded to. So I'm going to literally go off that list. I said uh, first request would be to please polish up and find night um, just general gameplay. That's it. I don't care about how, how many bells and whistles you got, whatever. My first request is please make sure that core gameplay is the best that it could possibly be. That's my first request. Second request, please bring back create a story mode. I've talked about it before. I could spend hours on that, and especially you and I, Dan, I think it has a sweet spot. We want to get into the film business, and, you know, the creativity is always going within us. So, And uh, for those of you who probably watch anything wrestling, we always have booking ideas, and we're always just, you know, going through ideas and just uh, spitballing ideas. So that's going to be my second request. My third request, I don't know if this is maybe what you were trying to get to, is um, the removal of career mode and the reinstallation of the season mode that we used to get, which would incorporate those different stories and would take your superstar onto different paths. And, and you know, depending on what decision you make, you, you would go somewhere else from that point. Kind of like a shut your mouth and a here comes the pain type of deal. Yeah. Yeah, in in a, in, a, in a way, that's one of the the approaches that you could take to what I was getting at. But yeah, yeah. So now that we have that uh, addressed, let's move on to the second forum where it says provide your feedback and wish list items as they relate to gameplay. So go ahead, Dan. I mean, so for me, kind of what what you said. I I just wanted to be more fluid. I wanted to be clean. I wanted to be intuitive and i honestly one thing i'd i'd like to see is a reduction of mini games <laughs> i just i just want it to be a more streamlined uh gameplay experience without the uh i know you're you're pretty good with the submission mini game 
but I don't like that one. I don't even like the button, the the specific button mashing mini game. Yeah, I was I was fine back in the day when it was like the breaking point thing, and you just slam the buttons until <laughs> it gets to the end, and you call it good. But it wasn't like you had to hit triangle or square. It was just you slam a button, and I think that for me is just more streamlined because of the fact that it's not also having to focus on a specific button, which. I'm sure it was part of the plan was if we add in this mini game where you have to hit a specific thing, it makes it more of a challenge for both players and not whatever. Yeah. But I don't so much care about it. If you need to up the stamina so that it's, it's more difficult, but I don't need it. That's fair. Um, personally for me, gameplay, um, literally just what I said before, uh, just make sure that the game is fun. And I, I even wrote them this when I was putting in uh, the top three requests. Um, best example of fun gameplay, 2K14. I literally put that in there for them just, just so that they can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, don't have restrictions. You know, Don't have me go down to one knee every 20 seconds. Um, don't restrict me from having my comeback in six man tag team matches. And please, for the love of God, I wrote this in there and I wrote, uh, please and bold, please get rid of, of that rollout feature. It absolutely takes me away from half the matches. Um, I stay away from a lot of matches just because of that one feature. Are, are you talking about the like multi man match thing where where if you yeah. take too much damage you just roll out and then you have to button mash to get into in, back into green? Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, that one's annoying. That one literally, if so, if someone pins somebody else, you can't break it. So basically, you're restricted from winning a match. Um, yeah. Get rid of those restrictions. Just make it fun. I get it. You guys want to go for a realistic type of game, but not to the point where it's Oh, you want to do a finisher? Well, your bar has to be up to this percentage, and you have to be in this position, and uh, the sky has to be this color, and the grass has to be this tall. Like, okay, I get the, it. The number, the number of times that I've gotten countered, uh, or I've gotten cut off before I got to hit a finisher, just because my stamina was a little too low, and then they came to and hit me, yeah, is uh, is annoying. Yeah, and I, I think you covered this one time where you said you were in a tag team match with Rusev and Lana, and there was this really epic moment that happened where you tried to hit a finisher, but because your bar was too low, it just, your character did nothing. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, tune up the gameplay, but please get rid of restrictions. I don't like that, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that. Um, did, you get, did you say everything that you wanted to say, Dan, in regards to gameplay? Yeah. Okay. Moving on to the next one, it says, provide your feedback and wish list items as they relate to roster. Go ahead, Dan. So here, so my thing on that is I put roster updates beyond DLC packs slash ongoing. Okay. Now what I, now what I refer to, what I'm referring to in that is for, I'm going to, I'm going to use Star Wars Battlefront 2 okay. as an example. Okay. I don't know if you have any exposure to that or what's been going on with it recently. To an extent. But. But so they they've stopped they're stopping support on it. So they put out like their last content update. But the game's two years old, and okay. over the course of that two years, they've put out a bunch of updates. And so you were able to like just recently they released a new skin for Ray, a new skin for Darth Maul, a new world where you can actually go and have the battles. Um, but they've been doing that over the course of two years, and granted, they also started out kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, shitty, like 2K did this year. Yeah. But but they fixed their bugs, they put in new heroes, new characters, new gameplay, and people came around, and now there's a lot of people who are really disappointed that they're cutting off support for the game. Yeah. But what I would what I'm referring to in this context is like every year they release the game. They put three DLCs out, and it's only like five people. Yeah. But but then you have people over the course of the year who come up from NXT or brand new signings who get kicked up to the main roster immediately, or somebody who just missed the cut but is now in the main event scene for whatever reason, and you don't get to play as those people because they didn't they weren't in the initial roster release or one of those three DLC yeah. packs. Yeah. 
And we've talked about the fact that, honestly, I don't think it would be that difficult for them to make a new character model for, uh, I don't know, Jinder Mahal. Jinder, was Jinder in this, this past year's game? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm trying to think of who, who might not be. But, like, uh, is Christian... I'm just trying to pick pick somebody are who didn't, you, who you, didn't get put you, into this game. Are you referring to just legends or people who are currently wrestling? I'm just picking somebody who who wasn't on the twenty the Diamond two Dallas roster. Page. Diamond Dallas Page. Okay, so DDP. Let's say so, something big happens or DDP stops working for AEW, and they go, "Let's chuck him into the game." Yeah. But they've already released it. They've already announced their DLC packs, which even that I would almost say stop doing the, the specific DLC packs yeah. and, and just kind of do it as like a as-we-go kind of thing. And if you buy the deluxe edition, you get those updates as you go, or you can buy whatever the name of the thing is, Accelerator or something. <laughs> yeah. But then they just roll out, oh, great news, guys, we got a new DDP character. Download him from the store. Great. Download him for, for a buck. <laughs> yeah, but, um... But do these these ongoing updates instead of once those three are done, you're out. Yeah. Um, when it comes to DLC, I believe there's a separate section for that too, so I'm going to hold off my comments until later. But uh, Correct, yes. yes, I do agree with what you're saying. Um, I also believe that there is uh, the Hall of Fame contract, that, and, I, and I believe what that uh, signifies is that if you're in the Hall of Fame, I think you can be on the video games regardless of where you go and what you do. So like a DDP who's already in the Hall of Fame, um, yeah. it's like, okay, the guy, he's a legend at this point. He's a Hall of Famer. Just because boo-hoo, he made two appearances or whatever in AEW, uh, you take him out of the game. I mean, some, sometimes it's tedious. But um, my major gripe with the roster, and I've said this before and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it now because it's relevant, Please, please, please get rid of duplicates. I can't stand <laughs> duplicates. Completing showcase mode on 2K20 was one of the worst things I could do for myself because after I was done, I had four different versions of each horsewoman. Um, yeah. Please, let's... And, and they have different movesets. Like, I get it. They they wrestled a little differently early on, but just have one uniform moveset. It makes it easier for everybody. <laughs> Well, again, Dan... Like, no, no, no one's going to go out of their way to, to be a specialist at 2015 Sasha Banks <laughs> over the other versions. Um, I'm going to just throw this Unless, unless that was the one with the highest stats. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I knew that's what you were getting at. Um, <laughs> but what I was going to say was, I'm going to go back to this for just one second. I always remember it because of how, how far ahead this game was ahead of its time. In 2K14, you had the Big Show, and you had different generations of Big Show, and he had different movesets for each um, attire. And guess what? It was all in one slot. It wasn't Big Show 1999. It wasn't Big Show 2001. It was just one Big Show. And then it, when it was you... approached like attires. Exactly. And it, it, it's, it's a very small detail, but it helps you, it helps you keep the game organized. It kind and, of... and, and to a degree, it makes it more more realistic because then you can't have Becky versus Becky or Big Show versus Big Show. Yeah. Uh, you can have old Big Show versus The Undertaker, but yeah. keeps, it, keeps it cleaner in that regard, too. Yeah, I've talked about how I'm not really a fan of the same wrestler versus same wrestler type of thing, but maybe that I have to bring down my wall of reality just a little bit, but... <laughs> Um, I will say, if it comes to roster, um, the, I mean, because of the roster that they give you now, it's it's pretty good. It's a big roster, you got to admit. But again, when you have four Baileys, you got four Sasha Banks, you got four, it's like, okay, we get it. We understand. I get it. You know, just put one slot, have four attires in there, and that's all you got to do. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, and and I, I think I come back to some of that in a little oh in the dlc portion so we'll talk more about that once we get there okay fair enough um next thing we got here provide your feedback and wish list items as they relate to new features go ahead dan uh so the 
uh, general manager mode, my big one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I put branching stories again, and I don't. Is this where I, I went into depth on that or not? Uh, no, that'll be once we get to. I don't even know which thing, the my career category, whatever. So branching stories, and then in in a reference to the James Ellsworth tweet that I I sent you guys earlier. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> WWE headquarters money in the bank would be sick. Like if it was all one match and you had different areas, but you had to navigate your way to the roof to to win the match. Yeah, that would that would that, and, and make it like an extensive building where there's replayability just in that match. Because ooh, now I can go explore this back corridor or whatever. But it's a it's a silly little thing. But I think that would be a really cool new feature to have in there. <laughs> yeah. Um. As of recent years, they, they kind of have that backstage area where you could go in in the parking lot and then you can go by the interview area, but it's not as interactive. Um, going back to your point, if we get a corporate money in the bank match, you got to make that thing extensive. And I mean, they do have enough time to work on it, so I don't want to hear excuses of, oh, that's a big match, we wouldn't be able to honor it. No, you got more than enough time to work on it, but... Um, I, I would like to see that, but I would like for it to be very interactive. I don't want it to be, oh, it's just, you know, this area with two different weapons and then you have to go into the next area and you have to go to the next area until you reach the ladder. I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be interactive, you know, where you could push your opponent into a cart and all this stuff falls over and maybe you could use a broom or you could use, I don't know, you could use a mop or you could use whatever and, you know, beat your opponent senseless with it. So, um... In regards to new features, I'm not going to say create a story because that's basically an old feature that I'm hoping returns. Um, in regards to a fresh idea, and I kind of thought about this, I wouldn't mind if, let's say, if it's like a season mode or whatever, and you start off as WWE Champion or you start off as an Intercontinental Champion, and basically you take on the schedule of being a champion. So, for example, you're the champion, all of a sudden someone comes up to you and goes, Hey, I want to challenge you for that belt. And then you kind of get the option of do you accept or do you go, no, you're not you're not worth it to you're not worth for me to, you know, waste my breath over. You shoo him aside. And then from that point the story could go one of two ways. Either he accepts that he's not worthy and he doesn't challenge you, or he attacks you from behind. He tries to get your attention to where you finally go, okay. I'll give you a title opportunity. Kind of like a branching championship mode. Kind of like a no mercy, but a little bit more geared towards the championship itself as opposed to, you know, feuding over, I don't know, a manager or feuding over a stipulation. The, this one would be more specific to just the championship. So that's what I would have and, to do. And, and it almost sounds like uh, you're kind of calling for the... Uh for the, the artificial intelligence of the game to, to play a bigger role, where yes. maybe it makes its own decisions based on your actions. So exactly. if you do, so if you do that trash talk, then the computer says, "Okay, well, I've got two choices. Which one do I want to do?" And that way, there's an unpredictability in that too. Exactly, because I know that usually it's all these things happen, but what do you, what are you gonna do? And going back to your point, it would be pretty cool if the shoe was on the other foot. If I make a decision, well, what's the computer gonna do now? I don't know. You just have to play and find out, type of thing. Yeah, I think it makes it interesting because of the fact that then it's sort of like a chess game instead of let let the computer play uh, devil's advocate to your behaviors. Yeah. So, next thing we got here, um, provide your feedback and wish list item as they relate to universe mode. Go ahead, Dan. So, for me... Um... I so I I I think you talked about how you've dabbled with universe mode a little bit more than I have, but I've always thought it was a little boring. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, um I said make universe more universe mode more streamlined slash engaging, similar to GM mode seven. Yeah. Um, but I think the big thing that would make it um. I think, in a way, Universe Mode has done what we were just talking about, but I think if you expand on that, where the computer plays 
uh, plays opposite you and the entirety of universe mode is a chess game, I think that that makes it uh, better. And I think that would be that would probably now that we've brought that up be the way that I would I would make it better. Yeah. Um, honestly, I haven't experimented too much with universe mode. I don't really even know what it's intended to be. Um, I think that when they took out GM mode, it was something that sort of, kind of, not really made up for it. Um, so I think it's more of a sandbox mode than anything else, where you can just kind of do whatever. But it, I, I've talked to you about how some of the creation suites in the past have taken four hours to complete one wrestler on. <laughs> and it just seems like universe mode is the same thing just for a story where you have to spend hours developing a 15-minute chunk of your show to, to your liking before you're done with it. It's, it's, it just seems annoying and obnoxious to me, which is why after my first, I don't know, hour and a half of dabbling with it, I went, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, um, I always skip over universe mode. I have been, I've, I've been doing so since WWE 13, so... Uh, I don't know. I just I don't really know what it's for. If you personally ask me, this is just me talking. I would say get rid of it and put that energy towards something else. That would be a better move. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one, I think we will have a lot to talk about. Provide your feedback and wish list items as they relate to creation features in the game. Yes. So this is one of the places where I went a little bit more in depth. Uh, I so I'll give you the short version and then I'll elaborate. Okay. So I, so I said more extensive created, created titles, create a weapon, more clothing customizability slash variety. Um, and so I'll break each of those down real quick. I've, I've felt for a long time that the, the create a title is very, very limited. Yeah. Um, if they put in more custom face plates, that'd be cool. They don't seem to re- like, I played with it recently and they're all flat all of the face plates are, are boring and flat and there's not really a way to add dimension to them yeah so so i think if they were just better designed that would fix that but i i would have no problem with playing playing with the creative titles if there was more straps more strap shapes more face plates more uh, side plate options if you could actually move the side plates <laughs> um but it, it's just it's a shoddy system uh, but then create a weapon I thought of when I sat down to do this. And this is mostly because with the uh, WWE originals from this the past year, yeah, there's a lot of weird, fun weapons. Like there's a, a pumpkin on a pitchfork that you can get yeah. and use as a weapon. There's, for all intents and purposes, a lightsaber. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a lot of quirky weapons. Lollipop. And I think if you... Yeah. And so I don't... Do you know anything about the Injustice games? I do not, no. Okay, so it's uh, basically... It's a, it's a fighting game with uh, DC superheroes. Yeah. And you can earn um, armor bits, which is like uh, different heads where like you'll... One head you'll just be clean, clean shaven. One you'll have slightly different hairstyle. Yeah. Uh, or another you'll have like a... Like a, I don't know, diadem or cr- little crown. Things like that. Yeah. Or people like Aquaman has a trident. And uh, they basically did it to where small chunks of the trident will change between the models. So one can be essentially the same as the next with the grip being slightly different. Oh, okay. Um, or going even further, Jedi Fallen Order, uh, which is the most recent Star Wars game they rolled out. You have a double-sided lightsaber that throughout the course of the game, you can get different uh, end pieces, saber colors, uh, grips, that sort of thing, and you can mix and match. Okay. And, and so I think if you could, if, if they make it to where you can do like a kendo stick, but you can change the grip on the kendo stick, you can change the hand guard, you can yeah. change the color, things like that, um, I think that would be a nice little a nice little touch for them to put in where we we can have a little bit more uh, control over that detail. Yeah. Okay. And then the last one was just more clothing customizability slash varieties. I just want more clothing. I want more clothing. I want to go back to where we can do the tucked in shirt or the not tucked in shirt. Yes. Um, and I would love if we if they found a way to make it to where you can you can essentially use anything with anything. 
because yeah. I talked about how I wanted a character to have the 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 crisscrossed katanas. Yes. But I also wanted her to have a leather jacket, and I couldn't do both. Yeah. Like, find a way to wrap it, or <laughs> or just, I don't know. But I, I think that there needs to be a way where you have more freedom to crisscross pieces. I tried to do uh, an, uh, my own personal Anubis, uh, the Egyptian god of death, the other day. Yeah. And 20... Uh, wouldn't let me put a couple of different pieces together that would have really driven home the Egypt theme, and I just had to swallow my pride and deal with what it gave me. So I, I think making it so you have more options and things fit together better, uh, which look to Injustice. Injustice does a really good job of making it to where pieces will change, but they'll all still fit together. Yeah. Yeah, um... I mean, I'll elaborate. Um, the, the the biggest creation suite for me would be the create a superstar. That's where I spend most of my time. Um, yeah. And I know we've talked about all this before. I'm just going to run through it quickly. Like you said, having the options of a, a shirt being tucked in, tucked out. Um, certain things like, you know, you put a bandana on someone's head. And if they have a ponytail, the bandana doesn't go... Um, Oh, it doesn't go under the ponytail. It goes on it. So the hair gets smushed. Um, you and know. That, that's a sim- there's a similar similar glitch in 20 that I ran across when I was doing doing that creation the other day. Where, you, you know, the plague doctor mask? That yes. It's like the bird, the bird mask? Yes. I, cha- I did that, but then I added like a scarf or something yeah. to see if I could like cover the bottom part of the face. And it folded the nose down into the scarf and I went what in the hell is this yeah there are times where you want your creativity to flow but then when you think about all those restrictions like I think I told you one time I'm creating a custom attire for Undertaker and I want to put a you know his uh, long coat on and it goes oh if you want to put the coat on you have to get rid of his gloves and it's like what what do the gloves have to do with it um, and I know there's that whole point system where when you put an article of clothing on, it takes up a few points. Well, then get more points or do something because, Jesus, we want to be creative here. We don't want to be restricted. Um, another big one, and I heard that the only reason why they don't do this is because it screws with the likeliness that they have uh, under contract. Uh, the whole likeliness thing um, where if I want to... Yeah. If I want to, let's say, shave Bray Wyatt and I want to give him a trimmed look, I'm not able to do that because his likeliness has to be exactly how he was scanned for the game. Which, yeah. to, which to me is kind of weird because it's like, well, you guys were allowing for us to change facial hair and hairstyles way back in No Mercy, which I understand is not the same thing when it comes to likeliness, but you were marketing The Rock's model as The Rock. And then you would give me the ability to go and give him a goatee or to, you know, shave his head bald. So why can't we do that here? Um, yeah, and I agree. I agree. I think I don't have any problem with the face being locked. But the easiest one for me to point to in this year's is Bailey. The game rolled out, and then Bailey did the the Karen hairstyle, and <laughs> they never they never rolled out an update. They never rolled out a, a model of that. And so she always has the side pony, and you're like, bro, that's not what she looks like now. <laughs> and you can't modify it yourself. You can't, you can't, and, and even if you wanted to, I don't know how people do it. I feel like it's probably by using an app or something, but doing a custom version is, it's like a big workaround to make the face look like the person. Yes. Yeah, that's that's the other part that screws you over is that now all of a sudden it's not Bailey's real model, it's a created version. Um yeah. which kind of t- like takes the flavor out for me if we're being honest. But I would just say yeah, back to your point, more customization options, stop stop having things bleed through other articles of clothing. Um Yeah. Uh, it's I, I feel like I have so much to say, but it's just it's not coming to mind right now. Just everything that we talked about, just tune it up, make it better, make it more extensive, make it more detailed. Um, 
and just allow for the player to just be creative. Don't, again, I'm going to keep on going back to this. Do not restrict the player. Yes, there are certain boundaries that you have to respect because of contract issues. And I mean, it's a game. It's, it's a virtual game. So the, you have to make something that's going to fit in the confines of a disc. I understand that. But I feel like there are so many times where they can do something and for whatever reason, they just choose not to. And people have to either glitch their way around or they have to work their way around. It's just, it becomes a big hassle. But it, if, if companies can fit the entire world of The Last of Us or Skyrim on one disc... Or Grand Theft Auto. Do, or Grand Theft Auto, you can do it on, on these. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so again, I'm not going to say too much more because I feel like I'm going to just keep on going in circles. But yeah, just fix those up. If, if, I, if I use an article of clothing, I want to be able to trust that it's going to fit and it's going to work the way that it needs to work. Uh, not, it's not going to bleed through. It's not going to go on backwards. It's not going to bend you know, something else, or it's not going to screw with something else. Uh, come on, you know, it's, it's, it's 2020 games are pretty advanced at this point. So yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, next here, we got provide your feedback and wish list items as they uh, relate to my career, your thoughts, Dan. So if we're going to stick with my career, this is the part that I was talking about. Um, there's two ways that I see that this could be improved to actually make it worthwhile. Yeah. And one is the branching stories where there's more decisions throughout that then will take you down a different path. And so you have different end, end games to get to. Yeah. Or I talked about this on a previous episode, I think, where you've got. I think it's eight or ten different character classes that you can put your superstars as. Yeah, yeah. If you're and if you're doing either the the mix them like the two character stories again next time, or if you're going to restrict it down to just one character again, um, and if you're doing that, you have to you have to have a male and female side. But if you're going to do the two characters, have whoever your primary is. So in this previous year's uh, rendition, the female, whatever class she is dictates what story you follow Yeah, and have a different story for each of those classes. Cause then if you got, cause if you, or I, sorry, I think there's like four or five classes, but then you have two, you can put it on either gender. Yeah. But so then you have, you have four or five stories that Depending on which class you set her as, that's the one you follow. And I think that gives you multiple replays through career mode without losing the magic of it. Yeah. Um, my answer, and it's going to suck to say this, but I would say get rid of my career mode. Um, yeah. Or if we're going to – if 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 the topic at hand is how to improve it as opposed to getting rid of it, I would say because I think I think technically my career is a staple in all the two K games, so that's probably why they're just looking to fine tune it or or re readjust it. Because yeah. um, if you just are erasing their staples, that doesn't so much work. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, I I think I said it in my fr in the top three wish list, and I and I wrote this in there. I said take out career and implement a season mode. Or make the my career more season mode esque. Where yeah, I think that's more more likely what they'll end, they they would end up doing. Yeah, because maybe you agree, Dan. Maybe you disagree. But if I have to choose, if I want my female superstar to be a powerhouse or a technician or a whatever, I feel like from the get go you're already restricting me. Like, why can't we have it before where I create my own superstar to however I want to create them? I put them into the my career mode and then it just dictates. It's a random generator where, okay, maybe you go this way where you have the option of, of turning heel. Maybe you go this way where you challenge for a championship. Maybe you go this way where you betray your best friend. Don't, don't let it be. Welcome to my career mode. Okay, select what type of fighter you want to be. Okay, now select what type of this you want to do. They, they narrow it down to where they can squeeze you into this tiny little story. And then it's like, okay, well, that's the my career mode. No, make it like before where, okay, you take the person whom you created, you put them into the season mode, and you just play. And you just have to see what happens. You don't have to choose 
What kind of a wrestler am I? Is it a face? Is it a heel? Is it an in between? Is it a baby face? Is it a powerhouse? Am I good? Especially, yeah. Especially go given given the difference between wrestling and basketball. Basketball is not a story driven sport. Yeah. While while wrestling is, and so that's why I think we get so bent out of shape when the story portion sucks. <laughs> Like yeah. I don't care. Like I don't care about playing through history in the form of the four horsewomen thing. No, I don't care. Please. But if you but if you give me a fresh, compelling story, especially one that'll branch off in different paths, that's what's going to make me want to play the game. Exactly, and that's why I always I go back to that whole championship mode thing. You know, if maybe you can have a my championship mode. There you go, my championship mode, where you start off as champion. And you could be a women's champion, you could be a U.S. champion, you could be a 24-7 champion. Each and every story is different, where maybe either if you're the WWE champion, you have to wait for someone to win a Rumble or a Money in the Bank briefcase. If you're a 24-7 champion, you, if you're backstage, you got to be careful. Someone could come, you know, scoop you up, and roll you up, and it quickly goes into a pinning minigame. If you don't kick out on time, you lose the championship. You have each and every championship be different. And I, that's what I would do if you want to spice things up as opposed to you start off in a small indie league. Then you have to make your way to WWE. You come to WWE. You have to go for the top prize. You have to make a name for yourself. And once you, be, once you become champion at Mania, you're inducted into the Hall of Fame. Game over. Career mode over. Hooray. Would you like to play again? No, because it's repetitive. We've seen that before. We've been seeing that since 2K15. 2K16, and we're tired. And I, th- I, I think conceptually, the the idea was fine for the last few the last few years to have somebody start in the indies and come up because that's been more of a reality within WWE over the last five years. But yeah, I I miss the days of where the story just starts in WWE. <laughs> yeah, or if you want to follow that whole thing, maybe you could go. Um, Okay, well, you start off on a, uh, on a main event on Wednesdays. Um, you have to make an impression. You have to go from we- main event on Wednesdays to, uh, let's say, Raw. And then you go to Raw. Okay, now you have to make it to the kickoff show for a pay-per-view. You make it to the kickoff show. You make a good impression. Okay, now you have to go on the actual pay-per-view itself. You go on the actual pay-per-view. Okay, now you have to make it to a Rumble or a SummerSlam or a Mania. And you can build it up like that. Um, it's just, it gets boring when it's, oh, NXT Performance Center. Okay, you have to impress um, Matt Bloom. Okay, he's impressed with you. Okay, they'll be in touch with you. He'll give you a call next week. Have another tryout. It just, it, it's become Great. so repetitive. <laughs> you know? I, I, and, and like I said, I, I, I got a kick out of the, the whole storyline following Buzz and and. and yeah. Let, let's not talk about the, the names, but Buzz and Cole Quinn um, and their ultimate feud going into the company. I thought that was that, that was fun. No, uh, yeah, that, that was great. And especially when in 2K20 you saw um, Cole Quinn make an appearance, it's like, oh, there he is. Like you feel good because it, it's, it's personal. If you, play, you have to play yeah, 2K20. Yeah, it's a tie-in. Exactly. So that, that's, that's okay. But if... Uh, just stay away from the whole indie leagues and you have to make your way up to the main roster because we've seen it already. When you've seen it so many times, it's like, okay, really? We're, we're doing this again? So, yeah. I do hope Cole Quinn continues to be a character, though, just just for nostalgia's sake at this point. <laughs> like, just, um, let, just let him be a, be a character. It's fine. Maybe even El Mago. I don't care about El Mago, but <laughs> shit, just throw him in there. Uh, the next one here we got, and I think, Dan, you and I were going to have a lot to say about this one. Provide your feedback and wish list items as they relate to DLC. Go ahead. So this is this is the one I kind of alluded to earlier. As far as DLC goes, it's the, on, the ongoing releases. And it doesn't have to be all superstars. It doesn't have to be... Um, it doesn't have to be new moves, but I, if you're going to do this... Throw us new new variations of moves here and there, but uh, for DLC, I would like to see not just these five superstar packs. I want to see superstars. I want to see new arenas. I want to see. And let me clarify that. I want to see things as as they happen. Yeah. So 
as we have a new arena, release it. As we have a new outfit, release it. As Bailey changes her hair, put put that out. Things like that. Um, because, like, even even going back two years when they did the SmackDown thing with with Becky and she got punched in the face, that became an iconic moment. I I tried to make a rendition of that character, but they could have just rolled her out. Yeah. SmackDown invasion, Becky Lynch, put the put the blood on her face. Even let that be like the skin of that character. Right. And I would like to see that as like an ongoing thing throughout the year, or if we reduce this now to an, a every two years thing, which again would make every game exponentially better then that's how you keep people invested in your game, just like Battlefront 2. You had Battlefront 2 for two years before they decided to stop doing the, the support and the, the new features. Yeah. And they haven't announced a Battlefront 3. So it would be the same concept. 2022, great. Now we got 2022 to 2024. Here's some new stuff to keep it fresh while we develop the new one. And then kick out the new one. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and at that point, if you have a strong base to start with, and you're putting out these little updates throughout the way, people stay engaged, and then when you roll out 2024, you have had that two years time frame to make any small tweaks you need to make and make a bomb-ass story. <laughs> once, once you have that groundwork, that's where you can make your My Career Mode uh, really, really elaborate, engaging, multi-tiered. And that, that's how I think that they can bring this series back to life. Yeah, um, I think what's important for a, a, a wrestling game is having it feel like it's always being... Uh, so I'm going to jump to an example here. Uh, you know how you always refresh a page on... Like when you're using up a computer and you have to refresh the page because something doesn't show up and you re- refresh the page and then it shows up? So I like, like Instagram and stuff. Yeah. So I think you need to take a small idea like that and incorporate it into here. How I would use the DLC uh, to my advantage, and I've t- I've talked about this since maybe the second episode of BA Select Star, but I'm gonna use Bailey since she keeps on popping up in the conversation. So for example, in two K twenty, two K twenty comes out. We have the old model Bailey. Everything is good. Uh oh, Bailey just got a haircut. She turned heel. New Titan Tron, new music, new finisher. Oh, well, great. Now Bailey is outdated. So, what do you do? Uh, for DLC, you release individual packs. So, for example, you go the Bailey heel turn pack. And what this heel, pack, heel turn pack has is the new hair, uh, maybe one or two new attires if that person changed attires, the new music new finisher, maybe new taunts that come with uh, voice animations. Um, maybe like, for example, Bailey, she has a taunt where she goes, uh, if you press um, the deep left deep pad, she goes, I'm your role model. And she throws her hands out, you know, because that's her heel gimmick now. So yeah. you kind of incorporate a Bailey heel turn pack. So that becomes for Bailey. And you could put it up for $1.99. And then maybe you go to a Baron Corbin where if he has a new finisher or he has a new look or an Io Shirai who is notorious for changing her look, changing yeah. her gear. You have the Io Shirai 2020 new clothing pack. Or um, I know that the na- names are not really catchy, but I'm just I'm going off of – I'm spitballing here. But that's what you do. And you don't even have to do it for two years. Well, I mean like for, ba- for Bailey, you could name it like the I'm your role model pack. Things yeah. like that. Like something relevant to that character. I get what you're getting at though. Yeah. Um, and it isn't – I mean I don't know if at this point if they're going to do a bi-yearly release. I don't know. So if they are going to do a bi-yearly release, that's how you update the game and the roster. Maybe let's say uh, – I'm trying to think of someone – Someone new who debuts in NXT. Fresh new superstar. We've never seen him before. Hey, that guy's pretty cool. I want to play as him. So all of a sudden now you could charge... Carrion Cross. Carrion Cross. Okay, let's do that. Carrion Cross debuts in NXT. Whoa, this guy is cool. I like him. He's he's really intrigued me. Okay, now in 2K, you go to the downloadable content section. 
Oh, there he is, carrying cross with a uh, finishing move, attire, titan trons, taunts, move set, everything. You th and if you want, because it's a new superstar, I wouldn't mind if you put it down for three three bucks. You know, um, yeah. You want to make it reasonable. You don't want to do nine ninety nine. Oh, get carrying cross. It's like really for one character. Yeah, you want me to pay ten bucks, but my approach for DLC would be to strip away the new moves pack. Strip away, uh, oh, NXT 2020 pack, arrival pack. Strip all that away. Instead, have I mean, I, th I think moveset packs and things like that are just quality of life updates that we should just get. I don't think you should be charging for that. Well, I mean, I hate to say it, but it seems like their motto, especially after 2K20, is cash grab. Whatever we yeah, can well, do, you know. I'm not advocating for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me neither, which is why my approach is how do you freshen up the game? How do you press an easy Brock, but how do you press F5, refresh the game, refresh the game, new superstars, new models, new haircuts, new Titan Tron, new music, new finishers. So, um, and you think about it, it's like, okay, well, if you bring it down to $1.99, a lot of people are going to jump are gonna jump at that. Oh, crap, one ninety nine for all of Bailey's new... Uh, bits and pieces and, you know, all the new stuff that she's incorporating to her character, hell yeah, sign me up. As opposed to, because one of the things that would always really get me is, let's say if I wanted to get a pack, right, it has four superstars. I think about it, I'm like, you know what, I really want superstar one and two, but three and four, I don't, I'm not really feeling I can do it. without, yeah. You know, but you still have to pay the ten bucks to get all four of them. You couldn't buy them individually. So, you, you, you want to make, you want it to be an, a, a good investment. You don't want the player to feel like they're getting ripped off or anything like that. So, that, that, that's, that's my sentiments when it comes to DLC. Just find a way to keep on pressing the refresh button is what I'm saying. Um, next thing here, provide your feedback and uh, wish list items as they relate to 2K Towers. What do you think? I'm going to keep this one super brief. Uh, again, kind of going to Injustice, uh, back to the Injustice 2 game. Uh, they have this also called the Multiverse, where there's a, a pseudo story and you fight through a, 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 a tower. You fight through a tower of people. It's the same thing. Um, it's fine. I honestly, for that, I don't know that you need to make too many changes. Just if it's there, it's there. Yeah, um, I feel the same way. Like, I I literally uh, tuned into the Roman uh, Reigns Tower in 2K20. I was maybe 30 seconds into the first match, and I just quit. And I was like, this is boring. I, I really do not want to do this. Um, I think... Yeah, and I, f I felt the same way. And I know they need, they need to make sure that they're functional. Because I had the Pilgr Pilgrim Rusev Tower in one of the, the originals. Yeah. And it was frozen for months. Like, I would beat Tyler Breeze, and it would glitch out and crash. And it just recently started working. But make sure your shit works. <laughs> yeah, again, I go back to core gameplay, core mechanics. Make sure everything is in play before you go to the bells and whistles. In regards to 2K Towers, going back to your point, if it's there, great. If it's not there, great. Don't really care. Um, just as long as everything else gets snapped into place, it, it, it could be a nice little feature on its own, sure, but I would rather they incorporate the slobber knocker type of matches or the, the old school gauntlet matches where you would face one guy in a straight up match, he would leave the ring and the next guy would come in and you would have to beat three of them in a row. Um, yeah. th those were more fun as opposed to having a match. Go into a menu screen. Okay, now we're setting you up for the next match. It's like, eh, okay. yeah, I think that would be even that would be a better way to do the tower. Is if you win, if you win, then it's th like on that screen throws up your next opponent. Says, "Do you want to continue?" Yes, and you hit okay, and then they come down. Yeah. Skip the entrances. That takes too long. Yes, just send send them down like a Royal Rumble match. Yes, exactly. That would be more fun. What they have now is start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, and it's like mm -hmm. yeah, I, I agree. I think that's why that why they're so tedious and why I'm I'm so nonchalant about it. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm right there with you. Um, 
Provide your feedback and wish list items as they relate to match types in the game. I know you kind of touched on this, but go ahead. This is where it gets fun. So, my thought process here is uh, there's a lot of games being remade lately. Final Fantasy VII, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Resident so Evil. Basically the, Resident Evil. So basically they're taking old things and bringing them to the present, putting them through newer newer game engines, that sort of stuff. Yeah. I think I think you could do the same thing here with the next game, where you grab some nostalgic matches. Um, now, obviously, things like the Fulfill Your Fantasy or Brown Panties match, I don't need those anymore. We can skip those. <laughs> but I have Championship Scramble. I got Buried Alive. Integrating the headquarters money in the bank would be really cool. Uh, Boneyard at this point, even. Yeah. Uh, but I put, like, classic SmackDown versus Raw arenas, because you had the Buried Alive match where you went up the ramp and you had the the casket sitting there on the mound of dirt you had to climb up on yeah just taking things taking (laughs) things like that and revamping them and putting them into the new game i think would be really cool yes and i know that and i know that the late like because now i think we're on the hard camera side and i think in matches like that I don't think you always were. I think we used to be on the uh, the announcer side, weren't yes. we? Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, for like even change the camera angle back to that for those matches. Yeah, because it, it it'll give it a different feel. Yeah, I'm gonna contribute to that for one second. There was a moment where the Royal Rumble, uh, you were right by the announcer side. So when someone would come out, like for example, Triple H, you know, he would have his entrance where he would come out with the water. He would spit it and he would run down to the ramp or Undertaker. He would start off with a slow kind of walk and he would, you know, kind of, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, jog. He would kind of, not jog, a power walk. He would kind of power walk to the ring yeah. and you would see the full thing. I don't know what inspired them to turn that camera 90 degrees to their left and it's like all that gets cut out. And it's like, come on. Yeah, and, 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 and like th- those entrances go all the way back to No Mercy. No Mercy was the same way. Yeah. Um, and I, I think the reason that they probably did it was to go with the realistic thing because we're always on the hard camera side when we're watching. Yeah. But it's also a video game. We can make that exception. I'll, I'll suspend a disbelief that I can see the, the Titan Tron. Plus, if you're putting so much energy into designing those Titan Trons, let me see them. Exactly, yeah. I, I mean, again, this is the part where I think, I, I know they don't have a subcategory for options, but if we can talk about options for one second, maybe have Change that... the angle. Exactly, you know, so that it, it goes to your preference. Hey, if I want the hard cam, I can have it. If I want, it, if I want to see the long ramp, I can have that too. Um, it's the equivalent of playing like a first-person shooter in first-person or third-person. Exactly, yeah, very well said. Um we were talking about um, the match types. Um, yeah. yeah, back to your point, uh, incorporate all those old matches. Um, I know that um, up until about two or three years ago, they took away the match creator. Where um, I don't even know if you could still do this, but I remember like in WWE 13 or 2K14 where you could literally have a one-on-three handicap match inside of Elimination Chamber. Um, oh, that would, that'd be cool if you could just, again, sandbox it. Exactly, yeah. G- give, give the player options, or you can even make it, let's say, if it's a one-on-three elimination. If I defeat someone, then they literally walk down the, the steel stairs of the elimination chamber and they exit the arena. Kind of gives it like a, 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 a better feel, like you're restricted, but when you start eliminating opponents, now it's, it's a two-on-one. Oh, it's a one-on-one, and it, it, it gives the, the game a, a more better feel. Um, so in regards to match types, yeah, just all those old school matches. And here's the thing. People have been asking for them for years. So I, I trust that the top three requests section is probably going to have a lot of those bring back this match, bring back that match. I wouldn't even mind the three stages of hell match that we used to have. Um, yeah, it's a best because it was always, it was essentially a best out of three falls match, but you got to set a specific rule for each one. That was fun. Exactly, and there was no reset. Like, if you got beat to shreds in the first match, well, then good luck. You better make it to the next one. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I would make that, too, where it's not, you know, you have the match, small cutscene. 
then you have the match, small cutscene. Like, no, sew it all together, make it fluid. And because I feel like that way, when it's not start and stop, you, you have more um, incentive to go back and play the match over and over again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Next we got here, provide your feedback and wishlist items as they relate to online features. Um, but I said, uh, make, make that lighter on the resources so that it glitches less. Like, that's the one exception where I don't need to see the Titan Tron. Because I feel like, like, put me in a basic, a basic arena, you can still have the crowd around, but like, if you're going to be on the hard cam side anyway, I don't need to see that, and that'll probably reduce some of the resources that are bogging down the, the stream. Yeah, um, I'll just say this. Uh, 2K14 was the last game that I really uh, did online. Um, I tried online in 2K16, um, and I think I tried it one more time. I Actually, I tried it a few times uh, when you and I uh, played against each other. And it was a mess. Like, you would press the punching button, a decent four seconds would go by, and then your character would, would try to punch. Um, Which would then screw with trying to counter the moves, and that's why I always got, got irritated, is because, no offense, I'm sure you're good. I just don't know that you're that much better than me that I shouldn't be able to counter you. <laughs> Yeah, cause, and even when it came to when it came to the pinfall mini games, uh, when you would try to kick out at three, you were you were trying to measure how to do that when the referee was counting one, because the yeah. game is jumping four or five seconds ahead. So you kind of you if you're good with timing, you have to time it correctly. But you have to time it early, like instead exactly. of the normal thing, you've got to be like a second or two early so that by the time the lag catches up it goes okay cool you're good yeah exactly so it's it's a mess like wwe 13 and 2k 14 were so fun to play online um yeah freezing and glitching would happen here and there but it seems like in recent years it's horrible uh yeah. i don't i don't even bother with it i don't want to go near it because it's a big mess so again i'm going to go back to it online make sure your core gameplay is in place before you implement Oh, five-way matches and whatnot. So, next thing we got here. Provide your feedback and wishlist items as they relate to 2K showcase in the game. What do you think? Um, what, on one side, I don't care if showcase is even in it Amen. anymore. <laughs> but, going back to if, if you're going to keep it and you want to make it better, I would rather stop playing history... And go into what we talked about in the form of the what-if uh, scenarios. So, yeah. rewrite history. Don't make me play through uh, every storyline Charlotte's ever been in. Put me in 1997 and play through a, a scenario or a sequence of matches. Again, it's sort of a mini story story mode or like the Road to WrestleMania thing, kind of. Yeah. Um, where we play with what would have happened with so-and-so if this match had gone differently. Yeah. So what if, what if the screw job, we'll just pick that, what if the Montreal screw job didn't happen or it was done on behalf of Brett, then what, is, what does Sean do? Like, is Sean then like, what the hell, Vince? And he leaves the company, le kick, tells Triple H to kick rocks, and then Sean goes to, to WCW. I just yeah. so, something something like that. You know that kind of uh, it, I kind of got an idea as you were saying that sometimes when we hear when when you watch WWE documentaries, um, for example, a Vince McMahon might say, uh, "I'm just I'm saying I'm bringing this up even though this was intentional." Um, let's say uh, Vince says, "You know, in in the year 2020, Becky Lynch was originally supposed to be in this feud, but then she got pregnant." So my bright idea is what if you take that, um, that feud that you had written down and booked and you animate it and you put it into the showcase mode, like feuds that never made it to TV. And yeah, work with WWE to take scrapped stories and just play them out. Like, they don't even all have to be good. Like, some of them can be really silly and campy and I'll, like, we can, we, we'll still have fun playing through some of them. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, last year, uh, or I mean, yeah, last year's showcase was pretty fun to play with Trey and Red. So I'll I'll take a realistic WWE feud that never happened. So I mean, just experimenting with an idea, but again, please let's let's stop with the uh, Daniel Bryan's comeback. Let's stop with the showcase mode. Let's. It got old like five games ago, and it's just it's not fun. It's one of those things where it's one and done. You do it, you unlock everything, and you never go back to it ever again. Let's 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 be honest. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just I, I again I want to say scrap it. They're probably not. Uh, just get rid of it. Um, provide your feedback and wish list items as they relate to community creations in the game. So for for me, and this is this is more of a a fantasy concept yeah is if they've integrated some sort of 3d 3d builder online somewhere so that it wasn't necessarily on the console or maybe it maybe you access it from the console but my idea there being that it gives the community especially since i know there's some really talented uh people out there yes let them make their own model <laughs> How so? What, uh, what exactly do you mean? Well, so like if I want, if I if I, if there's a specific outfit on the game, and I want to, like I want to either modify it or change it, or something is similar to a character I want to make, but it's not quite right. Yeah. M- make it to where I can personally go in and modify the shaping of the thing I somehow, see. or I can add bits onto it. Because, like for example, you've got the. This is a, a super basic. Uh, Constant, like example, but you have the Bane mask from like the Batman mask. Yeah, and it's missing a couple of the hoses because of the fact that they're trying to give you access to that, but they can't do it exactly Copyright. the same way. Yeah, but in the three D builder, then I can make manipulations. I can take one of those hoses and extend it down and make it connect to where now. I have the actual Bane mask or something like that yeah. because I think it's it becomes more of a fair use thing if a if a independent person makes it versus 2K themselves. Yeah, um, that's very interesting. I never thought of that. Taking things and altering them, that's actually a very, very good idea um, because other than that, I'm pretty happy with community creations. I feel like uh, someone creates something and you have free liberty to go and download it and make alterations all you want. Um, but back to your point, if I can physically alter something, like I'm, I'm going to, this is just an example. Uh, and let me know if this is what you're referring to. So in recent years, I've noticed that um, Mankind's uh, attire is where he has the, the long uh, white button-up shirt. And one thing that would always bug me is that if, if you really take a look at Mankind's attire, um, the sleeves of the shirt are usually ripped or they're cut. Yeah, they're, they're all torn up. Yeah, they don't go past his elbow. But then for whatever reason, when you go and look in the game, um, the, the sleeves, his sleeves are almost covered. It, it almost goes all the way down to his wrist. And that yeah. would always bug me so bad because I wanted the short cut off uh, version. So I don't know if this aligns with what you're saying, but maybe if you can go into community creations, you can take that attire and you could trim and chop it up. Exactly, you could trim the sleeves and you can make it to your liking. Is that is that what you're referring to? Essentially, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I I would love to see that because a lot of the time, especially when I'm trying to give a, a legend a retro attire. I have to kind of pick and choose and go, okay, what's the closest thing I could find? Because the game gives you something, but you kind of have to, you have to sort of use your imagination and be like, okay, how can I alter this? What's the best thing that I can find, you know? So, um, yeah, if, if, if that opportunity comes up, like a community creation alteration mode, where you can go in there and you can sculpt something or you can change something that's already in the game... Uh, wonderful feature. I would love to see it. Um, and by the way, that would become very useful for create an arena. Like if you want to uh, mold a piece and you want to put it into the arena, that would actually be very useful to do so. Yeah, it, it makes everything a, a little bit more like a like a roller coaster tycoon kind of thing. Yes. 
Um, next one here, we have provide your feedback and uh, wish list items as they relate to Road to Glory. Um, Road to Glory, uh, isn't that, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, is that one of the things, one of the things where like you have to earn an, a certain number of points to then go in and compete against other people? I think that's what it is. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not really sure myself. I don't think I've played. I don't think I've played it once, and I think part of it is because of my my note, which is get rid of the pre prerequisite to participate. Which like just is? let me fucking play. <laughs> well, what is the prerequisite? Well, uh, if I'm if I'm thinking of the right mode, and I might not be, but again, at that point, I don't care about Road to Glory. Um, I think you have to earn a certain number of points by playing towers or something in uh, order to gain gain access to the actual Road to Glory event. And it's like it's not like a small amount and you have to like sit down and grind out a little bit just to get access to the mode. Just let me in. Just let me play the damn the damn mode. <laughs> yeah, again, I've I've been spitting it out this whole time. Do not restrict the player. And that's that's unfortunately been one of their biggest flaws. And just like in scenarios like this, if you ask them, their business motto is, well, how can we get players to play this mode? Oh, they also have to play the tower mode to get access to this mode. So they we, we knock out two birds with one stone. Um, but when you think about it, when both modes suck and you really have no interest in playing them, it's like, okay, I'll skip that mode and I'll skip that mode too, and maybe I'll just go into exhi exhibition mode and play a singles match. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, that's that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Um, last one here: provide your feedback and wish list items as they relate to miscellaneous items that aren't covered in any of the other projects. So I guess any footnotes or anything that you want to add that hasn't been uh, called to uh, since we uh, began talking about this. By the time I got here, I, I had pretty much aired all my grievances, so I just wrote down, make sure it works before release. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, in, in short, QA. Uh, because, I mean, at that point, we're talking about uh, a technical thing. Uh, we're not even talking about a feature that we want in a game. We're talking about if the, if the game will even boot up it, when, when, we, when we turn it on. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. I, I really don't. I, I, I want to feel like all this feedback and all this energy that we're putting into it, I hope they listen. I, I hope they, they they pride themselves on it. We're always listening to the fans. Well, if you were, you would have given us G GM mode like five games ago and you, and you haven't. Um, so, and I, again, we've talked about this before. Making a game is not easy. It's, it's not just a push of a button. It's so much work and energy. But if they need bi-yearly releases to make a better game, I'm all for it. I, I, will, yeah. I will happily play 2K19 for another year if that means that by two, 2K, uh, or uh, 2K, uh, 2021, they're going to start giving us, you know, uh, teasers of, hey, here's the next upcoming game pre-order now it's like if it's good yeah put my money down for it um but if you're gonna have disasters like 2k20 th this this to me i'm gonna leave it at this miscellaneous comment your next game 2k is make or break that's it that that's what it comes down to you either make a good game or you break you go under Exactly. That's it. That, that's that's really all that there is to it. Um, any final comments, Dan? Uh, not on this. Um, I'll just check it out there and say, uh, join us in a future episode uh, when we delve into talking a little bit about the game that has been announced uh, by WWE WWE Battlegrounds. Um, is it Battlegrounds or Battleground? Battlegrounds. Browns, yeah. Um, to give our thoughts on that one and uh, touch base once again on The Last of Us Two. Hey, you get it? Touch base. What? Touch <laughs> touch base. B A select start touch base. Oh, uh, <laughs> maybe that should be the name of our segments sometimes. <laughs> touch base with the audience. Um, yeah, the touch base. Uh, well, 
uh, with that, um, thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, let us know in the comment section below uh, what you guys think should be implemented into the next WWE 2K game. I, along with Dan, invite everybody that um, 2K is finally giving us an opportunity to use our voice and express what we want. I would say I, I created an, an account. It only takes about a minute. Create that account, uh, respond to one of their threads, and just, just let them know how you feel. I, I wouldn't write a 40-page essay. I would keep it short and sweet, but if there's something that you that you desperately want to see, let them know in that forum section. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And by the way, Dan, we forgot to we forgot to do this on the last two or three episodes. Uh, always remember to save your progress and don't turn off the system. We'll touch base with you guys next time.